dukhang sarvang anusmritya kama bhogan nivartayet ajang sarvang anusmritya jatang naiva tupashyati the mind should be turned back from the enjoyment of pleasures remembering remembering that all this is attended with misery if it be remembered that everything is the unborn brahman the born duality will not be seen what is the way of disciplining the mind remember that all duality is caused by avidya or illusion and therefore afflicted with misery with this thought dissuade the mind from seeking enjoyment produced by desires in other words withdraw the mind from all dualistic objects by impressing upon it the idea of complete non-attachment realize the teachings of the shastra and the acharyas that all this is verily changeless brahman then you will not see anything to the contrary duality for it does not exist namaste this is so brilliant this is the final technique the ultimate secret and it's so subtle that is easily missed so you should like wind up your mind to its highest degree of attentiveness and your intellect to its greatest sharpness and understand this extremely subtle technique because it is the ultimate so what is this verse saying dukkham sarvam anusmritya remember that everything is suffering everything in duality everything in illusion huh kama bhogata nivartayet lust and enjoyment are all covered by this illusion so don't pursue them don't run after them remain situated in the self and then ajang sarvam anusmritya always remember the unborn ajang brahman is the unborn everything is brahman sarvam everything anusmritya always remember jatam naiva tupashyati and that way you will not see that which is born that which is born is impermanent and therefore both illusory and leading to distress because we become attached to the enjoyment of these things and then when they change or go away we're disappointed we feel suffering but it's our own doing only because of our attachment to it if we remain situated in the self in brahman in pure consciousness in the subjective reality we realize that all this whatever i'm seeing is brahman sarva kalvidang brahma everything we see is nothing but consciousness if it weren't consciousness we couldn't be aware of it so everything that we're aware of is not exactly the object itself but its reflection in consciousness think about that for a minute or for an hour or two <laughs> everything we experience is nothing but consciousness and consciousness is non-dual so even though it reflects the apparency of duality in reality in our actual experience there is no duality and this is why i always say to people 
never mind what you hear and read or think about even. Just look at your own experience. Everybody is having a spiritual experience all the time because we are situated ultimately in Turiya, the substrate of pure awareness, just like the coating of silver on a mirror. What is a mirror? A piece of glass backed with a reflective coating. So in the same way, what is consciousness? Consciousness is the sense of the awareness of the senses backed by unconditional, unconditioned awareness and being, Brahman. So because everything is seen by its reflection in consciousness, everything that is seen is actually Brahman. The world, well, we can't say whether the world exists or not because it's just like the snake and the rope. Brahman is the rope. The world is the snake. So even though we might see the world, it's only because of the way we're looking and the way we're interpreting our experience. It's not real. What is real is that everything we see is consciousness alone. We cannot say whether the world exists or not, just like we cannot say whether the snake exists or not. How can you say it exists? It's an illusion. It has no real existence. It's a mirage only. It's a misperception of the actual reality. We see, but we misinterpret what we see. This is Maya, <laughs> that which does not exist. So when we see the world as the world and we think the world is real, it's a misperception based on a miscategorization of our perceptions as being duality. And when we see as, oh, whatever I'm experiencing is simply a reflection, an appearance in my consciousness, then we see rightly. So this has been something we have been talking about for like literally 10 years on this channel. How many people have got it? I think I can count them on the fingers of one hand. Why? Because they have not done the practices. They have not done the research, read the scriptures, and thought about it until they get it. This is the work that's necessary to realize all these things. This is the sadhana. This is the study. I can talk here until I'm blue in the face, and I probably will. <laughs> But unless you do the work, you're not going to get the result. So that's why Shankaracharya says in his commentary on this verse, all duality is caused by avidya, which means ignorance, or illusion, which means seeing something uh, that's not there, <laughs> hallucination, huh? and therefore afflicted with misery. If you see things with avidya, without of ignorance, and, and think that they're real, you see the world, think that it's real, or illusion, maya, you see something that's not there, like the reality of the world, for example, or my existence as an individual, huh? you're going to suffer. So with this thought, dissuade the mind from seeking enjoyment produced by desires. Dissuade the mind. You have to persuade the mind not to seek enjoyment through desires. 
That's what dissuade means. It means to persuade away from or negatively. Dissuade the mind. This also implies that the mind is not under our control. We've been going through in our series on the Satikanda how Brahma sent Kama, lust, to illusion the whole world because he wanted Shiva to fall down and take a wife. So because of Kama's efforts, the whole world became deluded by lust. So in other words, the mind is not controlled by us. It's controlled by higher authorities. You have to dissuade the mind from falling for this illusory program started by Brahma out of his uh, misanthropy and his hatred of Shiva and get the mind to see the correct point of view. So in other words, self-realization is not like a matter of mystic meditation and, uh, you know, seeing some light or something like, you know, these are all stages on the path. But it is certainly not, for example, getting zapped by some yogi or, or guru and suddenly uh, you see only Brahman, huh? this white light or something. <laughs> People have the weirdest ideas. But it's a matter of dissuading the mind from seeing illusion. Or to put it in a positive way, persuading the mind to see things in terms of reality. That Brahman alone is real. Consciousness alone is real. Its contents are not real because they're coming in through the senses. And the senses we know are limited and faulty. Otherwise, why would there be things like optical illusions? There's an optical illusion where you look at this thing, this shape with dots in it, and it appears to move, or it appears to have shades and colors moving in within it. And they're not there. We're seeing the snake instead of the rope. And this is embedded in our perceptual apparatus, our seeing, our hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and thinking. Otherwise, why are, if you, if you look on, uh, on the internet, you can find sites about cognitive dissonance or cognitive illusions, and you find that there are 12 kinds of false logic. See? So how is it that our minds can be persuaded by false logic, for example, in advertising, to buy things that we don't need? It's a deep psychological study. And they have experts making these advertisements so that you'll fall for them. And the same is true of these gurus who charge lots of money for seminars and retreats and stuff like this. Uh, and promise to give you, well, anything, you know, the moon. <laughs> but it's not within their power. It is within your power to dissuade your own mind from seeing things as illusion. And instead, persuade your mind to see things according to the vision of the Upanishads, because that is the reality. And that vision leads to complete freedom from suffering and perfect self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.